The whole world can hear me yawning right now. All right, what's happening? Facebook and Memphis Entrepreneur Club. I'm probably going to keep this live stream up on Facebook since it's not something super exclusive, but it's actually pretty cool. Uh, maybe some of you guys that are doing web design can kind of use this as a idea or an example that you can implement onto your website. Um, what I've done today is created some of my portfolio items to actually have a video background. Um, I recorded the video using Telestream Wirecast in the aspect ratio of the actual photo that I have in my portfolio already so that the video could fit in there perfectly. Um, I imported the video. I tried to use a couple of different options to see which one worked best and ended up going with HTML, which I'm kind of against writing hard lines of code, but in some cases it is necessary if you want to have something custom. So I'm going to show you exactly what line of code I wrote, how I went about recording the video in the proper aspect ratio, um, how I set up Telestream Wirecast to do those recordings in real time, where I uploaded the video, um, how I changed some settings on WordPress so that I can upload uh, files that are bigger than 5 or 25 megabytes, um, how I implemented the code so the video can loop, and so that you can click on the video to go to the actual portfolio item. Um, so I'm going to start first with showing you, I guess this video just wanted to stop looping right there. Uh, this is a this video that's in the background of my website right now is actually inside of Revolution Slider. So what I was going to initially use was the Revolution Slider plugin to be able to import the video into this section right here. Right. So I've got images that are different portfolio items. You can click on these images to visit um, each website in the portfolio. All right, and inside of some of these, I actually wanted them to be animated with a looping video. So I had the option to do a video or GIF. Video worked way better. I didn't have to um, upload or record a high definition video of this website, uh, but I needed something that was gonna be of quality enough for me to go and um, have this render out as smooth as it could possibly be, um, to have it look really high definition, and to have it fit in this aspect ratio of the same images on um, in this row, right? So, I already got a comment in Jerry, <laughs> once in Jerry coming in on the video with, with the flame emoji. So that means she ain't working right now. <laughs> um, so what I'm gonna do is first show you how I set up um, wirecast to be able to record these in real time so the first thing that i do actually is i grab this image and i right click on the image that's in my portfolio item and i open that image in a new tab this is the image that we have i can right click and copy this image and i can open up adobe fireworks to see what the aspect ratio or the resolution of that image is so i'll click on file new paste that in there and we know that this is 718 pixels wide by 212 pixels tall so our video needs to be in the same aspect ratio of 718 by 272 so that it can fit perfectly inside of our portfolio all right video here and i have it set to loop sometimes it's gonna the stop the loop depending on how long you're sitting on the website uh, but this one's still playing what I do is I go over to Wirecast and I'm going to just go over and hit file new to, to open up a new document since I'm already in Wirecast on uh, this live stream. Uh, the first thing I want to do is go over to output and output settings. I'm going to choose record to disk MP4 and hit OK. And then, of course, I'm going to title my stream and choose where I want to save my video. So this might be portfolio item one. 
I'm going to click on this cog icon to see the um, output settings for this Facebook or I'm sorry for this mp4 uh, stream I'm going to click on new preset all right so this new preset I'm going to create a name and this is going to be um, portfolio item maybe or portfolio video okay and now I have the options to go in here and edit um, how I want this to be right so I already have one set up I call it the label us portfolio the way I have this set up is um, by default I enable the video encoding I disable audio encoding because we don't need audio in this portfolio item um, I changed the width to 718 the height to 272 to match the dimensions of our image and I changed the frames per second from 30 I tried 60 and it, it looked too choppy and I went down to 29.97 frames per second and that seems to give me the smoothest feedback for recording my screen when I record these websites all right I changed the quality from 3 um, to 5 so that we can have some fast but really um, high quality encoding for the video and I keep everything else as is but I disable audio and I click save alright so now I can go in here and change the default encoding from 720p 30 frames a second to my portfolio um, encoding and right now you see that my preview and my live canvas are in 720p once I change this to my portfolio preset it's going to change that canvas size to fit the actual canvas of my website portfolio item now I can send this blank shot over to my quote-unquote live stream right so let me go ahead and delete this shot what I'll do from here is I'll go and add a new screen capture because I want to capture my screen um, and you can choose this is probably gonna be actually the best option I choose capture video I turn off capture audio I turn off the show cursor because we don't want to see our mouse um, I choose you can choose window and Google Chrome and then frames per second um, I usually set the frames per second of this to 60 even though we're encoding the frames per second in the output to be 29.9 and then I select the window I want to use so we're gonna choose Google Chrome and then we're gonna find our new Google Chrome tab and we're gonna click OK and then we'll click OK again so this should bring up our full Google Chrome window uh, and maybe it's already been captured by something else I don't know actually let's see let me go back to those settings and reconfigure that refresh Chrome so I'm actually go to all applications let's see if that shows up and if it doesn't what we'll have to do maybe this is the one that it pulls up I don't know I can't tell so instead of choosing window I'm gonna choose monitor and I'm gonna configure I'm gonna choose the monitor that has my Google Chrome um, window so now uh, before I actually go and record the screen what I'm going to try to do is resize my window to fit that aspect ratio. Here's how I do that. So I open up Adobe Fireworks. I grab my image that is at 718 by 272. And since my computer monitor is actually a 1920 by 1080p computer canvas, um, I'm going to change the size of this to fit a 1920 width. So, but I'm going to constrain the property so that the height automatically adjusts and it stays in proportion so I'm going to change the width of this to 1920 I'm going to fit my canvas so this is now 1920 by 727 I'm going to save this image in a throwaway file maybe save this as delete and once I save this I'll go and open up a folder and find that throwaway folder And then we're going to find that delete so let's let's search for d and i'm going to drag this inside of google chrome 
now I know if I resize this window, I can resize this window to fit my entire screen uh, for the width and then resize the height so that the image fits in here perfectly. Now, when I go over to a website that I want to record, let's go to um, my website, which is a little crazy. Now, everything is going to fit specifically inside of this window at the proportion that my portfolio item is, um, but this is gonna be in 1080p instead of 718 by 272. All right, so now I have my window here and I'm gonna pull this over to a new screen. Since I have multiple screens, this makes it easier for me to do this. I'll open up Wirecast and I'll adjust the size of this window to fit. Uh, and I wanna see if I can, let's see, scale to fit. Let's reset and scale to fit. I'm gonna crop the, uh, the left. No, actually, I'm sorry, I'm gonna crop the top. I'm gonna crop the bottom. And I'll crop a little bit of the right. And then I'll center this. Let's see if I can. I'm going to scale to fit to see where that goes. All right, so I need to crop a little bit more of the top. And I want to try to get this centered. So now I can use the arrows on my keyboard to kind of center this exactly where I need it. Let's bring this up to 38%. And that fits in there really well. That almost fits perfectly. So now whatever I do on my website, if I scroll through anything, uh, I can go now and record this. So I'm gonna actually bring this down a little bit. I'm gonna take the top back to 100. All right, so this looks much, much, much better. And now I can bring the home screen over to my live feed, right? This is the first thing that we're gonna see when we start recording. And I'll go ahead and arm this to record and I'll kind of start scrolling through my website. But I'm gonna click on the middle mouse button and drag my mouse down so that it'll have a smooth scroll so I'm not using the mouse wheel to scroll it like this, right? So I'm gonna arm this to record. Click on my middle mouse wheel and then move down a little bit. The one on the right is gonna be more smooth because that's my actual output. I'll scroll down to the very bottom of the website. Might take a second to go all the way down, but we want it to look as smooth as possible. Click the middle mouse button again, and I'll even go over here and click back to top. And then I'll stop the arm to record button. Now I'll minimize this. I'll open up my folder where my videos are recorded and my video is already exported. So here's our video. It's exported in an MP4 and we don't have to wait for a video program to render out what I just did. It's already recorded here in real time. Um, so if you guys know how to access your website via FTP um, and it's a WordPress website, the first thing that you need to do is log into the FTP and get access to your website. If you don't know how to do that, let me know and I'll send you to a video to show you how to set that up. I'm going to go over to my server, open up the label lust server to my website, click on the website that I need to upload this video to. 
I'm going to go into WP Admin, and we want to create a php.ini file and upload that into the WP Admin. I'm going to click on View Edit so you guys can see what my options are for this. And if you want me to send this to you, I will. But a couple of the things that you want to have is upload underscore max underscore file size space equals space 50 capital M and a semicolon enter break the line post underscore max underscore size space equals space 50 capital M uh, semicolon. That means you can upload files up to 50 megabytes. You want to save this PHP INI and I can send you this in a text document and upload it into your WP admin folder. Now I can close my uh, FileZilla. And if I go over to my website now and I go over to the media library, I can click on add new. And now I have a maximum upload file size of 50 megabytes. All right, so now I can import these videos. So one of the ways you can do this is click on select files. Some websites you might have an issue or some browsers where this won't pop up and you can't upload the files. So alternatively, what you can do is open up your folder and literally drag and drop the video in there. I'm going to change the name of this video, though, to um, I'm going to change the name of this to official. Corey Owens um, website design for SEO purposes. I want this title to be here because I want to rank the website or this page for the word website and the word design before I upload it. I want to change that title. Now I'm going to drag and drop this into WordPress right into my media library because the file is let's see what the file size is actually 38.1 megabytes, which is above the average um, default upload size of like 25 megabytes. So I had to change that php.ini or create that php.ini file to make sure we can upload at 50 megabytes. Now I have my video that is uploading right here right now in real time into WordPress. Um, once this uploads, we can go and start doing some HTML to incorporate this into our portfolio. So let me show you actually how to write out the um, code that you need to implement into your page so that you can add this. So this is the code that I would write actually. So let me go over to my desktop, create a new text document. And I'm going to save this as video portfolio code. I will put this in a folder to be more organized, but I'm going to actually delete this myself. And what I'm going to do actually is literally write this code from scratch. And I'm going to tell you guys exactly what code I use. And it's going to be a lot. So if you know anything about HTML, we're going to start off with the ahref tag, which is a link tag. So um, open bracket, I guess. Um, a space href equals uh, parentheses per, or uh, quotation marks, quotation marks, and then I hit a space target t a r g e t equals quotation marks, quotation marks, and then a closing bracket, another open bracket. I'm going to type video, right, because we want to import our video. And that's going to be a link. So the video you'll be able to click on, which is why we have this opening a href tag. All right. So a link is a space href equals the URL that people can click on um, that people are taken to when they click on the video will be inside of these quotation marks. Target is actually going to be blank. B L A N K because when they click on this link, it's going to open that target in a new tab, a blank tab. All right, so let's say link is http colon four slash four slash www.coreyowens.com. And I know you guys probably can't really see this too well. So let me see if I can change the uh, font size. All right, so maybe 
that'll help you guys a little more. I'm going to hide my logo. All right, so what I have is ahref equals HTTP, blah, 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 my website and the closing uh, quotation mark, target equals blank. All right, then we open our video tag. So video space, I wanna have a image here in case someone looks at the website on a mobile phone so it shows an image instead of the video so it loads better. So we're gonna have um, poster, P-O-S-T-E-R equals and our quotation marks. Inside of these quotation marks is gonna be the URL for the image we want to use. I can go ahead and open up my media library to find that image. So we're gonna find, um, I actually don't know which image it was. I think it's this one. All right, so this is the image. The image is 718 by 272, which is our default size for our portfolio item. I'm gonna grab the URL for this image. We're gonna paste that URL in here. There's our URL. I'm gonna hit a space bar, um, so space. Autoplay, I want this video to play by itself when the website loads. So autoplay, A-U-T-O-P-L-A-Y equals in quotations, autoplay. Close quotation, space. We want to loop, so L-O-O-P equals in quotations, loop, L-O-O-P. Close quotations. Um, space, I want the width, W-I-D-T-H equals quotations. We want this to be 100% because we want it to stretch to the full uh, size of our portfolio item. So if I open up my portfolio again, we want this to stretch out to 100% of its container from this end of the, the uh, browser to the end of this portfolio item. By stretching it 100% width, it'll automatically um, adjust the size of the height to fit to its proportion. So um, close the quotation, space, height, H-E-I-G-H-T equals quotation 100%. Close quotation. And then we close this video tag with a closing bracket. Or technically this is an open bracket because the open is facing the left. But we're closing this video tag with an open bracket. And then um, we do another... Um, closed bracket to open another source which is actually going to be source so a source tag s-o-u-r-c-e space the source um, s-r-c equals quotations and this is going to be the url to our video so let's go back to our media library find the video we just uploaded all right it's right here i'm going to grab the url to this video i'm going to paste that here and then close the quotations there. All right, and then space. We want to show what, what type of video this is, what format. So I'm going to type T-Y-P-E equals um, quotations video, V-I-D-E-O forward slash MP4 because this is an MP4 format, right? So if I open up that video, it shows that the video is a video MP4. And then I hit space, forward slash, we're gonna close that video tag. And then we're gonna close, I'm sorry, we're not close the video tag, but forward slash, we're gonna close this source, right? So let me just break the line so you see what I'm talking about. So we've got our opening ahref, which is our link. All right, so we're gonna have to close this link tag eventually. We've got our opening video uh, tag. And then we've got our source that's uh, the video tag is basically defining the properties for the source, right? So this source tells us we want to import this video via HTML and it's an MP4 video. This video tag tells us what the video is going to do. Um, so the video is going to have a poster, which is a default image for our mobile phone. And then it's going to autoplay the video. It's going to loop the video. The width and the height are going to be 100%. All right. And then all of this will be clickable via this link. So now we have to close. First, we open the ahref. So we want to close the ahref last. The second tag that we open is the video tag. So now we want to close the video tag first. So we 
do a opening um, we open a new tag with a closed bracket right or the less than sign and then we type forward slash video video and then we close that tag so this opens the video tag this closes the video tag now we want to close the ahref link tag this opens the tag this closes the tag so forward slash a all right so inside of our link we have all of this information which means this tells us that all of this inform information will be clickable when we click this we're going to go to corions.com and it's going to open in a new tab all right so this video tag tells us what this source is going to do how it's going to perform what it's going to what the actions are going to be basically now i can remove all these line breaks and this is our entire video tag we're going to copy this I'll go back over to WordPress and I'm going to open up, um, I'm going to go to edit our page and I'll find the portfolio item that has my picture already. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the ninth one in the third row, third column of the third row. So here's call or here's row, uh, row one row two row three and the third column is right here i'm going to delete this image that we have as a single image Let's scroll back down and find that click on this plus symbol underneath our button and we're going to add a we're going to go over to the all and we're going to add a text block in this text block we can add html or regular text i'm going to delete all the text I'm going to go over to the text properties. So right now this is visual properties. For instance, if I imported a media file like a regular image, right? We're going to see the visual of this image. But if I go over to the text tab, we're going to see the HTML of that image, right? So this basically adds HTML for you in real time. But we've coded our own HTML. So I'm going to delete this HTML. If I look at the visual, we see nothing there go back over to the text and we're going to paste our HTML in the text properties. Now, if I go back over to visual, we should see this gray box that shows us a video was supposed to be here. Okay. Now I click on save changes. If I go back down, here's our video. It should start animating in real time, but I'm going to move this video above our button. So now it is properly placed in our portfolio. I can click on preview changes and the video is there and it's animating and it's playing in real time. And I'll let it start scrolling down. So my mouse is hidden. Even though I recorded this with Telestream Wirecast, I hid the mouse so that you don't see me right or middle clicking to actually have this do a smooth scroll and um, it's a link. So when I click on it, since we have that target equals blank tag in here, when we click on it, it opens a new tab. All right, same thing with these. Even though there's a link under it as well uh, with the button, we wanted this to, we want them to be able to click on the video as well as a portfolio item. All right, so now that I've previewed that and I'm satisfied with it, I can click on update. Sometimes when you update properties on your website in WordPress, you won't see the updates even if you refresh the page. Don't panic, just open your preview or, or when you click update, um, you might have to preview your website in an incognito or a private window. If you're using Safari, Firefox, or Google Chrome, um, right click on the view website and open that in an incognito or private window and it will show you all of the updates including color changes that you may have made in your theme options all right so i scroll down to my portfolio and my video should be animated now because this is wordpress and because it automatically does some mobile optimized design for you you can minimize this website 
um, to a thin browser window. All right, so this is gonna be like what you would see on a tablet. And if I minimize it all the way down, you'll see what you're basically going to see in a mobile phone. So let me refresh it now. And on the mobile device, depending on what mobile device you're using, you may not see this video render. You may not see these videos render, depending on what phone you're using. Um, so let me go ahead and pull up my iPhone. Search for server. Uh, let me go and activate this. So enter license move that off the screen and stuff let me go find this license really quick always buy solid state hard drives because you don't have to wait for them to load up like this which is what my hard drive is doing right now okay So what I'm going to do is open up my handy dandy iPhone with screen mirroring. We're on iOS 11 too, by the way, which is really cool. Um, 11.2. So if you guys have not seen um, some of the iOS 11, um, you know, videos, definitely go check them out. Now I'm going to open up Safari. I'm going to refresh my website. And what you'll see on my iPhone is that the videos do not render automatically. Maybe I have a setting set to where the videos do not render um, and it's just a picture that displays. So depending on what your settings are on your phone, whether or not you're connected to Wi-Fi or 4G, you may not ever see the video render. You might just see the first frame of the video or the poster of the video, right? So. Uh, right here we have the poster the video comes up and it doesn't actually start to play inside of revolution slider you can change some settings to make that play if you want to but here's our first portfolio item and it is the moving company website here is the me skateboarding co portfolio item and it has the poster that we imported and here is the poster from the most recent portfolio item where it has me um, kind of putting my hand out in the crowd, right? So um, on desktop, that's actually animated. On my phone, on the other hand, we have our poster showing so that it loads faster because it's a mobile phone and not a desktop computer. So that's the reason for having this poster tag right here. Poster equals HTTPS blah, 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 label us blah, 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 dot JPG. All right, so that poster tag, then autoplay, then loop with blah, blah, blah. Poster tells us, hey, if we're on a device that cannot render this video, um, make sure that we show a photo instead so that it can load faster. All right, you can go in there and add more video types like OGG or um, .avi or whatever might be compatible with other devices so that if the video doesn't load on this device by MP4, it loads the alternative version of the video that this device might be compatible with. But for um, as a default fallback, you want an image because that's going to load the fastest. And I can still click on this image, boom, and it's going to take you to my website in a new tab. I click on the image here and it's going to open it up in a new tab. All right. So this is what it looks like on the desktop. This is what it looks like on mobile. Everything is mobile optimized. It pretty much looks the same. Uh, you see some subtle differences depending on the size of your screen. Right now I'm using Google Chrome right here. And this is my iPhone seven plus in Safari. Maybe if I download the Google Chrome app, this might look a little bit different, but everything is mobile optimized and I can go back to my tab to close out my tab. 
or I can hold down the tab button and close all my tabs, which is what I'm going to do. All right. So if you guys have any questions, comments or anything like that, uh, shoot them in the comments below. If you know anybody that can benefit from this video, who is a web designer or getting ready to learn WordPress, tag them in this video or share this with them. Hopefully this can be helpful for some of you guys that are taking my course or learning directly from me how to do website development. Um, that is something that um, an agency or an individual would charge a large, large, large amount of money to do for you because um, they use really complicated tools and they don't have the software or the experience to be able to set something like this up for you in under 30 minutes, right? I'm doing a live stream and I just did this in real time, recorded it, uploaded it, did the code, imported it into my portfolio in about 30 minutes, right? So all we have to do now, if we want to go back and record more videos for more portfolio items is duplicate our um, visual composer module. So we go and find the video. We say, hey, now I have a new video that I want to upload into a new portfolio item right here. I can go here and um, into my page that I'm editing, duplicate this module, right? So now I have two of them move this over to where I want the new one to be, delete the image out of the old portfolio item and replace the contents by clicking the pencil icon, going up to the text editor and then changing the link to the poster, right? Which is here all the way down to JPG and then changing the source of the SRC tag for the video once we upload that video. And of course, changing the URL for that portfolio item. Those are the only three, three, three things we have to change after our video is recorded and uploaded from Wirecast. Alternatively, you can use Adobe Premiere Pro. Just keep in mind what the aspect ratio of the portfolio item is, or use something like Adobe After Effects or Camtasia Studio to create the video and render it out. Uh, uh, another thing to keep in mind, you do want to keep this down in a small aspect ratio. Uh, what I've specifically used is 718 by 272, even though most videos are in like 1080p or 4k, we want to keep this video at this size, right? Um, because when we load this on our website, the video is not actually going to take up the full screen. It's actually going to take up a third of the screens width. So let me uh, set this to zero, boom, fit the canvas. All right, so it's only gonna take up a third of the screens width, right? At the most, it's gonna be about this big. Boom, portfolio item, portfolio item. So the video needs to be rendered out to this size so that it can load faster on your website when people go to the website. All right, so we click on update to make sure that this is updated. And then we're going to visit our website in an incognito window to make sure that we're seeing the most recent version of the website. So let's wait until this loads, which I think it's taking a minute. I don't know what's going on with that, um, but it looks like everything is loaded. I can now open up our website. I think WordPress just like took a dump, which that happens. I'm going to close all of these. And let's see if I can open that in a new tab. Actually, I meant to open this in an incognito tab. So I'm going to open this in an incognito window to make sure that we're seeing the uh, latest, most recent version of this website. And boom, our videos animate automatically. They fit into our canvas really well. The only difference that you'll notice between the video portfolio, portfolio items and the photos is that our link is moved down just a little bit because there's a, uh, because we're using an HTML tag and there is some empty white space between the video and the next item inside of our visual composer module. And that's okay because we have this video embedded into a text uh, block, right? So because we have this video embedded into a text block, there's just a little bit of white space underneath that portfolio item.
but that's okay. It doesn't make a big difference because our portfolio is pretty much still looks very uniform. It looks uh, very modern and everything is running really, really, really smooth because these videos are way smaller than their actual um, HD full quality size. All right, so I don't want to put videos on every single portfolio item, but this kind of makes our website pop. And, you know, some people might not want to click on every single website item, but um, by looking at this portfolio, they can see, oh, wow, if I go to that website, is that what I'm going to see? They click on that link and they're like, there's no way that website looks like that. And they start to kind of scroll down and they're like, wow, OK, actually it does. OK, then. So that's a real video of a rendered version of the website. I click on this link, it opens a new tab. I'm gonna mute this tab because it has music that plays. And that video loads automatically. This is literally what they see in my portfolio item because I literally recorded the screen. Now, if you are doing uh, fashion and you wanted to have a video version of an item of your catalog, and I'll show you an example of this. Go to amazon.com and you have, let me reload this so you can see, there's an image here and then it refreshes or it fades into a video where the woman is modeling the address. So obviously you're gonna have to have a decent quality camera or and, and really good lighting if you're trying to do something of this quality. And then you want to bring the video into a canvas, um, into your video editing software that fits the um, element on your website exactly. Right. And this video is either going to loop or it's going to stop at the end of the loop or it's going to fade back to the portfolio item. So I'm going to refresh it and it shows you with her hands on her hip first. The video starts to play out. She turns around. It's like, oh, wow, this is a cool dress. And I can see um, a 3D version of this dress. It's like, OK. Now I really know what this looks like. It's not just a static image. So if I were to buy this, this is what I would be buying. I like that. Let me click on it to get more information about it. So with my websites, I wanted to do the same thing. It's like, wait, um, you can build websites like this with video in the background. Oh, wow. You can build websites with parallax backgrounds. Oh, you can build websites with a truck that moves away from the screen. Um, so this kind of gives people more of a real time idea of what the experience is like um for my clients in their websites so i only want to animate just a few of these to kind of show like hey some of this stuff looks really 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 cool you know when you actually go to the website it's not just a normal website that you're purchasing you're buying more of an experience a brand some bespoke tailored uh branding in each uh portfolio item Okay, so if you guys have any questions, definitely shoot me a comment. Thank you guys for watching. Use these little things down here to give me a reaction. Obviously, you have to react, react on the actual video. You can't click on the video itself to use those reactions. But if you want to see me do a video talking about something else specific related to branding, digital marketing, website development, building an online business, networking, or uh, advertising, or anything in the aspect of that, let me know. If I don't have the video already recorded, I'll consider recording a free video for you. Alternatively, you can go over to www.memphisentrepreneur.com club to access some of my um, courses that I've recorded where I'm talking about digital marketing and how to build websites and how to actually go and get clients so that you can provide this stuff as a service. There are over 500,000 people, sometimes even over a million people every month that need this service. So you can find at least one of them that is willing to pay you upwards of $1,200 to um, have you do this for them from anywhere in the world. All right. So people definitely have to consider that websites are the new business cards. But what do people generally do with business cards? They stuff them away. They forget about them. They throw them out. They don't care about them. 
So when building a website or handing out a business card, you want to hand out something that's a little unique. So when people get that business card, they're like, wow, this is nice. That's what everybody says about my business cards. But I want them to say the same thing about my website so that they can't forget the website. Right. So that they want to go back and visit it to see what the experience is like. So when I build out a website for my clients, I try to build out something that's bespoke and really nice and really interesting and gives a unique user experience for their end user, for their customers, for their clients, so that when their clients come to the website, they don't want to leave. They want to stay and experience the website. They want to become a member. They want to buy the product. Right. So uh, when building a website, you got to understand that. All these little unique things being on a website is going to make your customer want to spend more money uh, so they can have something unique that's game changing better than their competition or um, they're going to want this because their clients are going to want to spend money on them. So it's going to be an investment for them to say, hey, we want the best of the best. We want something that looks extremely awesome and unique. What can you do for us? And I say, hey, this is what I can do. Here you go. So to my Facebook audience, thank you for tuning into my live streams. I really appreciate all of the engagement, all of the friend requests I've been receiving, all of the support that I have from uh, my international audience. It's really incredible. And um, I'm really excited for all that's in store with not only my business, but yours. I'm happy to be collaborating with you guys to help you build your influence and digital presence online. Um, especially with some of the local businesses. One of the really cool things that I just got into with an opportunity with my dentist is that um, he's been helping me out with my teeth because he wants to barter services with me. So I initially I had to come out of pocket, me being self-employed and self-insured. And now I've had an opportunity to now offer my services to him, which he actually brought up in conversation. Hey, what is it that you do? Um, I'm interested. I didn't actually solicit him with my services. And he said, you know, hey, I want you to do something for me totally unique. I want to stay ahead of the game. So there's an opportunity for you guys out there to provide these services to anybody in the world, to people that are close to you, people who are starting a business, people who own a business and need digital marketing, and even local businesses who don't have good digital marketing with a website or with a uh, social presence on social media. So learning these types of things, it's really quick. Um, you know, you just learn basically something that even big agencies don't know how to do really well. And you learned it in less than 30 minutes, even though this is now a 50 minute video. Um, that is like, you know, at least I would say a thousand dollars worth of knowledge because people will pay you a thousand dollars to implement something like this on their website. Right. Um, of course, they have to be qualified to spend that money and they have to see that as an asset. So um, this is some really groundbreaking technology and knowledge that I'm dropping down to you guys for the free free. I'm going to leave this up here for free, actually, for um, indefinitely. I'm going to also upload this to my YouTube channel. And this is going to be inside of Memphis Entrepreneur Club. So if you guys do decide to join Memphis Entrepreneur Club or subscribe to my YouTube channel, you will find this video along with many more where I'm giving away a lot of value and a lot of hands on, um, you know, tutorials on how to do this type of stuff from start to finish. Hope that this has been helpful. Hope that this has been pretty insightful for those web developers and those people who are trying to learn WordPress. Uh, Visual Composer is modular and there is so much that you can accomplish with Visual Composer and WordPress. So consider WordPress over HTML, over Shopify, unless you have a benefit specifically to using something like Shopify, Wix, Squarespace or Weebly. I always don't recommend Wix, Squarespace or Weebly because WordPress gives you so much more control creatively and administratively so that you can pretty much take over how you want your website to perform, to look, to feel, the mood, the branding. I always recommend WordPress. So definitely consider going over to WordPress if you don't already have experience with it or if you're currently using HTML, CH, uh, CSS, and PHP development from scratch because you're going to be able to make way more money building WordPress websites because most people who need websites and have the money to pay for them don't care how they're done. They just want it to be done fast. They want it to look good. They want it to perform well and they want it to be mobile optimized. They want it to be pretty, right? So why go? go and spend 12, 24, 46, 48, whatever, how many ever hours coding a website from scratch when your client does not give a shit about how it's done. 
they just want it to look good go and set up a wordpress website in a day and start building out with wordpress uh plugins and you know use some of my videos as a guide to kind of help you build out these wordpress websites obviously there's a lot that you need to learn but there's a lot of money to be made when you're building wordpress websites because there are 500,000 people every month who are starting a new business or trying to build an online presence as an influencer or public figure right and they need some type of digital branding so that they can really stand out Hope that this has been helpful. Give me a thumbs up, share this with somebody, and I'll see you guys in the next video. If you're in Memphis Entrepreneur Club, mark this bonus lesson as completed. Go on to the next video and give me a shout when your website is finished so that I can give you an additional 20% commission on your affiliate URL and uh, so that I can gift you some pretty exclusive benefits for finishing your website. All right, so please, if you're inside of the Entrepreneur Club or if you're watching my YouTube channel, take action and use these courses to build a crazy website for yourself and send me a link to the website that you have built. All right, I want to see you guys take action and actually get some results and start making money from your businesses through these digital properties. Peace. Let's review the top 20. Let's review the top 20.